welcome guys with another reaction with the toxic channel and this time we do uh, i believe we did we're gonna do another time andrew tate but first we did a video i thought it's an interview but that was uh, just a meeting like emergency meeting speaking fresh and fit and andrew and tristan they were uh, they were speaking like like say like men between men only that's they just speaking like that was no interview no debate just speaking but this one is fresh and fit still in romania but it's the interview so before we check it guys it's two hours i know it's so long but we're gonna take some good notes about it as much as he can as much as he keep doing interview as much as he ke we keep reacting to it because he have uh, some some really good point to, we can take it and even if we don't agree about everything he says we take just the point that we agree on them so we no no need for getting emotional to speak about the things that we don't agree about them we just take the, the really good point and we see what we're going to say because every time he has something new to say i didn't find this video on youtube i find it only here so i will check it from here guys uh or maybe it's another emergency meeting i don't know guys i'm gonna check it first time this one and before we go to it guys make sure to check the stores i have some cool design there i'm going to drop them on the link in the description and on the video you're going to find it there you're going to find the t-shirts you just click in it and you go to the store and make sure to purchase something as a support for us for do they said guys this is a store make sure to check it i have cool new cool design there and i'm dropping every day new design as you see the meowgistic is my it's not my favorite but i like it it's a hippie cat my favorite is the the wolf the hunter fearless yeah and you can see it from back from front and this one I put it only in the back in the in the front here it's uh, for the woman studying there is a reflection for it as you can see i'm dropping every day uh, design you may find something you really like freedom yeah like this one i lost my boo see this one is also i i like it but my favorite one is also this one the dream catcher the fox between the four, the wolf and the fox, uh, I uh, pretty enjoy them both. Uh, this is my favorite design so far, the fox and this one. Yeah, and I have we have cool design also, so you can check Dark Dark Vador. Yeah, the cats. Yeah, you can check. Be simple, be creative, seek. So yeah, make sure to check and uh, to purchase something from here, guys, as a support for us. I really appreciate it, guys. And if you want to see me doing more reaction, make sure to purchase something from here, guys. See ya. Thank you win more guys and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more and i have other suggestions not just andrew tate i'm going to do also kevin samuel he's also a speaker he speak the same he have the same message but he just he deliver it differently so we're going to get to it later guys i had this suggestion i'm going to get to it later let's check <laughs> I love the song. <laughs> Let's see. What's new? What? What's poppy? Let's see. No, no Tristan though. No voice. No voice again for them do we I guys just want mr producer played to the universe as many times as possible you know what man i agree I yeah agree. you know what we messed up on the first one guys welcome to fresh podcast where we're andrew fucking tate top g you guys are gonna see the mr producer one more time let's fucking do it yeah i love, I, I, I do like this song and <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, guys. All right. All right. Sorry, guys. Uh, that was a mistake on the first one, but I think we're good now. We figured it out. Uh, this is why Andrew's the top producer, and I'm not. Nah, I messed it up on <laughs> the first one. Two producers and one sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Guys, we're good um, now. We're good now. Yo, I, I uh, th this is, you guys have been waiting a very long time for this. And Andrew, me and you talked about this offline. If there's one thing that I got every single day 
When are you guys going to interview Andrew? When are you guys going to do another podcast with the Top G? Every time I stop, get stopped by someone on the street, when you collab with Andrew again? Your guys a podcast changed my life. Yo, you guys made me break up with my ex-girlfriend. You guys made me walk away from this shitty job. You guys helped me uh, change my life. You guys kept me from, you know, doing terrible things to myself, etc. When are you going to do another podcast? And I told you guys for a while, look, man, Andrew's dealing with some things. We're controversial as hell. We might not be the best people to necessarily do a fucking collab right now. And at, at the end of the day, bro, when your buddies with somebody, your buddies with somebody, it doesn't you don't need to fucking do a collab on the internet every single day. That shit, man. Yeah, we had we had to delay it, unfortunately, because it's kind of funny. My last fresh and fit appearances <laughs> are word for word in my case file. <laughs> Crazy, bro. Yeah. Word for word. So there's pages and pages and pages of these case files of evidence. So there's no evidence. It's just it's just translated YouTube videos. But uh. My fresh and fit one. So somewhere deep in a Romanian dungeon. Four hours. Courthouse, underneath my file number on some particular page somewhere. If you find it, you can see me call a girl. What? Taekwon Ho? Yeah. Taekwon Ho, <laughs> yeah. Taekwon Ho <laughs> is sitting somewhere beneath a courtroom in Romania. It's amazing. You're in Miami. You, you tell a chick she knows Taekwon Ho. And three years later, it's being dragged up in court in Romania. You're like, the world is nuts. So, guys, now you know why it took so long. But yeah. now we're here today. Yeah, so this man. will all be translated word for word. So uh, I guess I should behave, but we all know I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> last stream? Oh, man. Yeah. Yo, last I was shocked. I was, I was like, shocked, what the hell? He's like, like, these hoes. I was like, wait, what? Andrew, we... we... The thing <laughs> is, we live in a world now which is post-comedy, right? You, mm -hmm. You're not allowed to make a joke. You're not allowed to say anything. You're not allowed to make people laugh because someone will get offended and someone will cry about it. This one reminded me of a TV show. It's just came up to my mind. Who remember Jiri? You know, I forget his. Uh, I, for, I really forget uh, his, the last name, but uh, the, the name is Jiri, and he invited a bunch of people like on platform and ah, uh, like someone cheated on on his wife and with his. It's a fucked up thing. Uh, if you don't know the show, check it on the YouTube. You're gonna find it. It's a fucking crazy show and people just in the the public they really roast you like they, they they don't care at all they just go to it go to you directly and they insult you they insult you wherever it comes to their mind and uh, i believe it was a long time ago this show i don't know he's not in air anymore and it was a long time ago but i uh, if it was these days it will never it will never be on air it will never be because uh, is they, is, is, I don't know. You cannot even you cannot make jokes without offend nobody. Everybody is sensitive. Every, everybody is sensitive. Sensitive, yeah. So you cannot make any jokes right these days. Out there and they're like, you call woman hoes? No, I don't. I call hoes hoes. <laughs> I call hoes hoes. I, I do. It's if simple. you're a hoe, I'll call you a hoe. If you're a nice woman, I'll call you a nice woman. I'm not going to go through life lying to myself or lying to anybody else. I think the number one masculine imperative on the planet is being the kind of person who says what he means and means what he says. I think that's actually a very good measure of how masculine you are and how much control you have over your own life. Can you say what you think? Because most men can't. They can't tell their wife what they think because she'll leave. They can't tell their boss what they think because they'll lose their job. Mm -hmm. So they can't tell their friends what they think or their friends will alienate them because they're a bad person. So these people going through the world with these thoughts stuck in their head, they can't say. And that's permanent cuckdom. I refuse to do it. I'm going to say what I mean and mean what I say. And I don't think that men should be weak and small and frail. And if I find one, I'm going to call him a little bitch. And I don't think women should be promiscuous. And if I find one, I'm going to call her a hoe. Take me to jail. Simple. You know, it's funny that they, uh, you know, they clip that part, but they don't talk about, you know, all the women that you support, you take care of, the families that you've created, uh, the, you know, all the people that you support and all the women that you actually protect. It's actually kind of crazy how oh, they never oh, talk yeah. about that. Oh, absolutely. And they also they never talk about my arguments. That. I talk about avoiding bad people as a man. As a man, you should avoid bad people, both male and female. You do not want a friend as a man who will snake you. Yeah. But as soon as I say, don't get a girlfriend who's going to snake you, the world has a mental breakdown. It's not even a gendered argument. It's actually universal across both genders. But as we all know, when the Matrix wants to attack you, they can... If you've made content online for as long as I have or as long as we do. Ten plus years. Th that's right. They can find thousands enough. of hours of footage and they can find the three seconds they need out of context and they can attack you with it. And that's just the nature of the beast. And then it's a litmus test for the populace. The people with a brain at home understand what's going on. And the stupid people are going to sit there and go, lover boy method. My yeah. dummies. Man. I mean, bro, I was on Fresh and Fit. All those girls love me. I love boy every single one of them. They all want me by the end of it. That is true, actually. Fresh so. would be in jail for that, with that lover boy thing. Um, no, anyhow, on a brighter note, guys, <laughs> you know Andrew Tate as 
what you see on camera, but there's more to him behind the scenes. Andrew, you're a father now, um, and you've gone through a lot. What's it like being a dad? How do you manage what you went through being a dad as well? Where's your kids? Uh, maybe on the way. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe, oh, you, you know what? I want a kid one day for sure, but I want to hear your answer first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you have a child, the only regret you're going to have is that you didn't start earlier. Mm. There's truly nothing more beautiful than having a child. And also, maybe I'm just old and jaded. I'm a bit older than you. But you get bored of life and get bored of everything, and you start to live through other people when you are successful enough. You look at Christmas morning, right? It's not about the dad. It's about the dad giving the kids what they want, and he smiles because they smile. And that's the masculine imperative, to live through other people. I truly believe that male happiness comes from making other people happy. There's a beautiful poem. I think it's in Arabic, and I don't know who wrote it. It might have been by a warlord. And he says something like, stress is mine, peace is yours, sadness is mine, happiness is yours, but you are mine. And he's writing to his woman saying that my life is not fun. My life is stress and pain and hardship and difficult. You have a great life. I give it to you, but I get you by extension. And that's why it's worth it to me. Mm. And I think it's the same with children. If you're a man and you have your stuff in order and truthfully, there's going to become a day fresh. I know you're out there living big, but there's going to come a day where you're bored of the club and you're bored of the hose and you're bored of the, all the fun ain't fun anymore. And you're going to say, well, what's going to make my life worth living. Well, how about I have a little version of me and try and make them the be a better version of me? Yeah. Not just replicate me, but make them a better version of me. And love is your link to the future. And I'm telling you, my only regret with having children is I didn't start earlier and I don't have 200 of them. There's literally no downside. They're not as expensive as people say they are. It's not difficult. I mean, a lot of it's down to the mother you have them with, right? Right, right. If the mother's out of control, then they become expensive. Holy then they become difficult. But if the mother respects you and she listens to you and lets you be a man, then it's easy. Bro, the poorest people in the world have kids. Your dog costs more than a kid will. Your Lambo costs a lot more than the kid ever will. That is true. So kids aren't even expensive. And often you see women going, oh, I need this or he needs that, I need that. No, you're bored and you want to put him in designer clothes. And they said, guys, this is a store. Make sure to check it. I have cool new, cool design. And I'm dropping every day new design. As you see, the Meowjistic is my, it's not my favorite, but I like it. It's a hippie cat. My favorite is the, the wolf, the hunter fearless. Yeah. And you can see it from back, from front. And this one, I put it only in the back, in the, in the front uh, for the woman studying. There is a reflection for it. As you can see, I'm dropping every day uh, design. You may find something you really like, freedom. Yeah, like this one, I lost my boo. See, this one is also, I, I like it. But my favorite one is also this one, the dream catcher, the fox. Between the four, the wolf and the fox, I, I pretty enjoy them both. Uh, this is my favorite design so far, the fox and this one. Yeah, and I have, we have cool design also. So you can check Dark, Dark Vador. Yeah, the cats. Yeah, you can check, be simple, be creative, seek. So yeah. Make sure to check and uh, to purchase something from here, guys, as a support for us. I really appreciate it, guys. And if you want to see me doing more reaction, make sure to purchase something from here, guys. See ya. Thank you. Dress him up in designer clothes because you want to go shopping for designer clothes for your little kid like a doll because you're bored and you want him to be a little model. Well, guess what? He's going to do push-ups. He has two t-shirts. He has there two pairs of trousers. Mm -hmm. And if he's bored, push-ups are endless and free. <laughs> so he should never be bored until they're all done. All the push-ups finished because I still see push-ups in the universe. I just tried to do one. I could do it. I should have attempted and failed. It should have been like, no, sorry, the push-ups are finished. They're gone. The daily allocation of world push-ups have been used by your offspring. And unless that happens, then boom, they're cheap. So kids are cheap and they truly are a blessing. I, don't, I have nothing bad to say about being a father. I recommend everyone at home do it. If you find a woman worth having, then have a kid with her. Why not? Okay. Why not? Get to it, Fresh. <laughs> what else are you going to do? <laughs> you, know, you know what's kind of weird? Yeah. How do I say this? I just kind of feel like just fucking all this pussy for the sake of fucking it is just gay. You know what's crazy? Is that weird? No, it's not. Because they're girls it's and you're a guy. Yeah. But there's it's just gay. There's something gay about, I'm going to fuck this pussy, and I'm going to fuck that pussy, and I'm going to fuck that pussy. And it's like, okay, cool. And I'm not saying you have to have kids with all of them. But you should at least, at least give God the chance to give you a child. And it, it probably won't happen most of the time. But when it does happen, it's a blessing from God. And I personally, as a man now, won't have sex with a girl if there's no chance of having a kid. What's the point? It's funny because uh, even now, dealing with girls, unless it's going somewhere, I don't want to even like entertain them. Okay, but where's it going? Well, it was fun at first. Okay, but, yeah, but, but, but exactly. So you get past all that, and then yes. it has to go somewhere. Where is it going besides children? 
where does it end? No, it's pointless. Exactly. It's, it's but pointless. Uh, but hold on, Myron, when you have your kids, bro. I still like smashing hoes, man. <laughs> be honest with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe I'm old and boring. I don't know. You hey. know, I have my main girl. She's great. You know, uh, she's doing her homework right now. She's. Uh, I told her she's got to play five hours Overwatch, and she's doing that. <laughs> so, but uh, but no, man. I mean, like, but I I felt that when you said that, Andrew, that um. Your, your happiness as a man a lot of times stems from providing happiness for other people. Of course it does. Um, and I think that's a man's job is, like, to provide stability and security to other people. Like, you know, for my parents, um, you know, for people that you care about. It's very important. You're going to feel happy as a man when you feel respected and needed. You yeah. need a purpose. People need to need you alive. If you're the kind of man who everyone's life can function perfectly fine if you get hit, struck by lightning, then you're not going to feel happy. You're going to feel happy when you realize that people need you. And... For them to need you, you have to be useful and you yeah. have to be competent. And whether that's children or your girlfriend or your parents or anyone else who cares about you, I think living for other people is one of the most beautiful things a man can do because it gives you a purpose, a higher purpose. And most of the men out there who live normal lives do exactly that. Why do they work jobs? They work jobs for other people. They don't do it for themselves. Yeah. They don't even keep most of the money. It goes on the kid, the wife, the house, and they're taking care of others. And that's a masculine imperative God has instilled in us, and it's a beautiful thing. And I think if you're going to do that, you may as well do it for your own offspring. Who else are you doing it for? I agree. So... Um, Andrew, take us through, um, cause I know the people, you know, they're, they, they've asked, you know, and this has come up or whatever, but take us through that day, man, because that was a dark day, not just for you, but for us too. Um, you know, I, I remember vividly that, um, I had plans for that. Uh, it was like New Year, right around New Year's, you We're know, I canceled all my shit. I was fucking angry. Um, I appreciate that. no, bro. I mean, Yo, he was yeah. livid, bro. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. He man. had plans. He has everything, bro. <laughs> I mean, the Matrix came for me. I knew they were going to. I kept saying on every single podcast, the Matrix is going to come for me. Called said, if they, in fact, there was a podcast I did two weeks before. I think they were called Strike It Big in London. I said, if you see me on Shout the news, if you see me on the news with some bullshit charges, I want you to know that it's fake. And I expected it to come. I was trying my best to Aikido. I had no idea it would be human trafficking. I know they normally choose a sexual crime because the primary objective is to damage your image yes. amongst the populace. So they have to choose a heinous crime. If you know what is crazy about what he said right now? Because every um, because uh, originally I'm a football player, right? So I know in scent it doesn't. When I say football player, it doesn't go with what he's saying, but I, bear with me one minute. I'm going to explain it to you because every case of a football player that he had and it ruined his career and his life and his marriage and it ended up with being broke. His wife left him. He had no house. He's sleeping in the car. It ended up all by one girl. She sued them and she was underage. And I don't understand, I spoke about this before, I still don't understand why football player doesn't learn the lesson and stop doing this shit. Find a wife, get kids, move on. Why are you trying to fuck this and this and this? And Like Benjamin Mandy, he used to play with Manchester City. And after that he vanished, so I didn't know what's going on. I just recently saw him getting out of court because he was in jail for three years because a woman, she sued him. She was that she said he's, he raped me. And then he just got out and the allegation that it was against him, it was like uh, all me drop out and uh, it wasn't true. So he lost three years of his career. He lost three years of playing football. He lost all his money. He lost everything. And the girl that she sued him, what happened to her? She, she sued him. It didn't go. Okay. She moved on. She had her life for... That three years, she lost nothing. She was living her life. I don't know what she was doing, but he lost three years of his life. And that's not fair, guys. That's really not fair. So that's what I'm saying. Why, why football player doesn't understand the lesson? It's not just Benjamin Mendy. Benjamin Mendy is just an example. There is many players of him like that. I hope they're going to learn the lesson and stop doing this shit and find a wife, make have, kid, have kids. Just move on. Don't be like, I want to go to the club, this, 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 this. If they came at me for, I don't know, tax evasion, who would care? No, nobody. nobody. So they have to come at you for the most heinous thing they can. The whole rape charge garbage, everyone's bored of it, so they decided to up the game with me and come with you. Yeah, that's what I said, exactly. But that's when in bed, Oh, the way? And okay. I heard my door getting banged on, five o'clock in the morning. I reached for the gun, and I'm not going to lie to you, I was pretty relieved when I saw the police. I thought it was, I thought it was the other team. 
I thought this might be the final showdown. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, who are these, you know, the Serbians, the Albanians, the Turks, which ones got in? Yeah. And then once I saw the cops, I was like, oh, thank fuck, it's you guys. And for the first hour, I was quite relieved that it was police and no one else. And then there was this 15 hour house search and they went through all my stuff and stole all my things and stole all my cars and stole all my watches and stole all my cash. And stole did you know at gold. that point that you were going to go in or did, did or did they, like, cause they had done this before they stole? Like, they, they uh, took... a year prior and they, obviously they gave you all your stuff back and yeah. there was nothing there. I was done. Yeah, it was done. I, I, it was done before prior and I was released in like four or five hours yeah. because they knew there was no case and all of our stuff was given back. So I was kind of like, what is this about? And the police are not particularly helpful. They're like, you're going to find out, sit here. We're robbing you. I said, okay, well you just sit there and get robbed. Unless you want to escalate it and make it worse for yourself. Yeah. But there's like 25 dudes with shotguns in the house. I mean, how far can you get? I know I'm pretty, I like to think I'm Jason Bourne, but I might get clipped on the way out and be able to run slow. And so what can you do? Right. And yeah. the, and you go to jail and they say, okay, the judge is going to decide if you stay in jail or not. And then you go to the judge and the judge says, yeah, you're going to stay. Overnight. We know the story. Okay. We know the, the story. Next judge decides if you stay longer than that. We know the story. And they decide you stay. And then you go to the appeal and they decide you stay. And I was in court once a week thinking I'm going to get out. And it's just extension, 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 extension. It's pretty crazy. And you're in a situation where you have absolutely no control over any of it. You're thrown in a jail cell. And when I was told it was for human trafficking, I didn't even understand. For the first, because of the time it happened, it happened a few days before New Year's. The paperwork hadn't been translated, and they couldn't get hold of a translator because of holidays and stuff. So I had this paperwork in Romanian, which I can't read. But for the first two weeks, I literally didn't know why I was in jail. They said human trafficking. I'm like, human trafficking who? Yeah. When? What are you talking about? Yeah. And they said, you have to wait for your papers. Two weeks later, I get the papers and find out that I had been giving timings to some friends of mine of when is the best time to post on TikTok. And that is how they got me for human trafficking. Wow. And, 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 and I can't say I was surprised. I mean, I knew the case was bullshit because I knew I hadn't human trafficked anyone. But I can't say I was surprised. And then you're in there and you're like, okay, well, this is obviously a garbage case. They fabricated deliberately to throw me in jail so they can find a real case. And they know they don't have a case right now. They come up with some garbage to throw me in jail to find something I've actually done. And a lot of the people at home don't understand, especially my haters, etc. I will argue this right now. I don't know how many people are watching us. I'm cleaner than 99.9% .9 of people who are watching this stream. I've been investigated by three or four different federal agencies and special services from different countries my entire life head to toe. Anyone I've ever spoken to in my entire life has been questioned. And they found out that I made some old videos and made some jokes and I told some girls what hours to do TikTok. That's what they found. If you take the average man and put him through the level of inspection I've been through, you're gonna find, gonna a, find, lot yeah, you're gonna find a lot worse. You're gonna find a lot worse. So I haven't really done anything wrong. And now we're in court with this current case about the TikTok timings. And the judge keeps giving us more and more freedom, saying there's no evidence here. This is garbage. And it looks like it's on its way out. But I don't know. Maybe I'm a pessimist or maybe I'm a realist. But I believe that war is never ending. It's just cyclical and it changes. And when this war is Scared over, me. another war or will come or another war will come before this one ends and i don't think there'll ever be a day where i wake up and it's just peace and serenity i think i'm gonna wake up and there'll be some other battle going on and currently we're winning we might get a setback and sent back to jail you just have to be man enough to deal with all of it what else can you do and and not only that but like you know i can only imagine right being in court not understanding language okay. proceedings going on in front of you they're talking about you everyone is in a courtroom because of you right the whole world is watching and you don't even know what's going on yeah court in a foreign language is very strange They're very scary <laughs> everyone's it's scary every when you understand the judge can you imagine yelling. when you don't understand yeah and you're just standing there like what everyone's yelling back and forth and i have a translator but she can't keep up and she's old anyway i don't know i mean she's a very nice lady but it's very fast and hectic and she's kind of like um uh, um and nobody knows what's going on it's chaotic and then you just go back to the cell and they leave you there with the cockroaches damn and you start to think well how long am i going to be here Am I going to have a life when I get out? How am I going to pay for my kids if I'm in here for years? How am I going to pay for my life if I'm here for years? And then, I guess, if you're the average person, you're going to sit there and, and consider, how could I have protected myself from this, at least financially? How could I have made sure my bills are still paid and my children are still taken care of if I'm going to be in this cell for years? If you're the average person. If you're the top G, you knew this was all coming from the beginning. Right. You're, and you're very well set up. And this goes back to what we said at the beginning, because you find solitude and you find solace in the fact that when you call up the people you care about, their bills are paid. That's the only thing that made me feel good in jail. I'd call up the mother of my children. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Bills paid, bills paid. She's going to private school, going to private school. Good. Okay, you're paid. Everything's. Everyone I called on the outside was good because if they weren't, I would have felt much worse. But thank God I had my things in order. And then this goes by extension to the men at home watching this right now. You think you've got 
a bank account with some money in it and you think that you ha are capable of taking care of the pe people you love, wait till the feds come. Because yeah. that bank's gone and all your access to all bank cards and money is gone and your passport's gone and your ability to work is gone and you're going to soon learn that you can't take care of anybody unless you've done a lot of groundwork for a long time before they hit you. And you're going to see. And have a good structure of guys around you, you know? Shout out to guys like Shooter, you know what I mean? Who, Absolutely. Who Guys you can count on. Guys you can say, send me a million dollars here, I'll fix it later. And they'll just do it. Yeah. And there's not many people who have that kind of network or that kind of brotherhood because you are the type of person you hang around with. And not many people are good enough a friend to have good friends. Yeah. And then you're in trouble. I can only imagine if a regular person had that same scenario, how could they pay for their family? Yeah. You know, survive. I mean, Top G Dick could do it, but could we do it? I yeah, mean, that's tough. Yeah, for a regular person. Yeah, it's a regular person because, I mean, I I don't want to talk about anything illegal. I'm just talking about how the world actually works. Mm -hmm. But you need to have multiple jurisdictions that at least you have some degree of finance in. Yeah, you can't have it all in one jurisdiction. You can't have it all in one bank. The average person has it all in one bank, bro. Yeah, one bank on one address and they sit there and go that's my money and this is my house <laughs> newsflash sir it's not they are not yours because yeah. all it takes is for the police to go and find some judge who you've never heard of to stamp a piece of paper and then you're going to lose it all and then you're going to have to sit there and try and get it back and they're going to say your way to get it back is a lawyer and the lawyer is going to say give me money please and you're going to say well i don't have any and that's it it's lawfare. It's a form of war warfare, and the goal is to damage your influence and bankrupt you, which is what they've attempted to do to me. As we stay, as we sit here now, it's been a year and five months, I think. I haven't had access to a single dollar. I still don't have any access to any money. I still don't have my cars. I still don't have my diamond watches. I still don't have my gold. They, All of my things have been taken from me. They now, give him it's nothing. Been a year and five months. It might be years and years more. How would the average person, if you're sitting at home, pay your bills for a year and five months with no income and all of your savings taken? How would you do it? How would you pay for your lawyers? How would you pay for your children? How would you buy new diamond watches? How would you fill up the cars on the driveway again? Be top G. You got to think about these things before it happens. Yeah. The rem like everyone's looking for the remedy. Prevention's better than a cure. And you have to understand as a man in the world today, and I don't think many men at home truly understand this, you're all fucked. You are all guilty of everything. If you are a man with a penis, you are guilty. All it takes in any state in America, it doesn't matter if it's a liberal state, conservative state, whatever. It takes one woman who knew you to go into a police station and accuse you of something. And your life is basically done. That's all it takes. And she doesn't need evidence. She doesn't need. She doesn't even need to remember when it happened. It didn't even need to happen. Yep. Andrew. She can just call up and say, yeah, I think I was around him. I was drunk. It was April of 2017, and he was aggressive, and I don't remember I was drunk. You're going to get arrested. They're going to come and arrest you for that. That's what it's coming to. Do you ever think, Andrew, coming to Romania, you left America, you left England, kids in Romania, that a girl could come here randomly and destroy your life like that? Well, Romania is actually a very sensible country, and I... A lot yeah. of people have given Romania a hard time for what it did to me. And I have to be very logical because I think if you remove the emotionality from events and try to find your fault in them, which is what I do because I believe in absolute self-accountability. So I blamed myself for going to jail. Yes, it's a matrix attack. Yes, I'm innocent. Yes, a girl lied. Yes, but I'm still blaming myself. What have I done that put me in jail? And I became massively, monumentally influential on the internet. I said things that the government and the power structure did not like. I then understood that a judge who's looking at my case and i'm i'm logical if you're a judge and you sit and then you hear human trafficking and then i'm brought in there and i'm mr fucking skinhead with my muscles and i walk in there and they go okay bugatti ferrari kernan's egg yacht jet girl 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 okay yeah yeah Pro probably jail i understand how these things happen that i'm not emotional about it i'm not bitter about it but the fact that an American girl came here and made a false accusation and managed to create such a mess. Would that have been possible without me being monumentally famous in a country like Romania? No, they would have laughed her out the police station because they're actually very sensible here. Right. Which they did laugh her out the first time. They laughed her out the first time. For and all you fucking haters, they laughed her out the first they time. They laughed her out the police station when the first call was made in April. And then there was a six or seven month delay in which nothing at all happened. And then when I was canceled online, when they deleted all my social media and started putting in the mainstream media that I'm dangerous and I need to be taught a lesson because I'm misogynistic and I'm damaging the population and I'm basically fighting against their psyops. At the same time, the case was picked back up mm -hmm. and they decided to put me in jail for this TikTok thing. Now, I have to be careful what I say, but I think people at home with a brain can understand. When the global powers decided to silence me, 
the case was then picked back up. Mm. I'll let you do the math. Okay. So, I mean, if I was guilty the first night I was arrested, I would have never been released, of course. She was laughed out of the police station for a reason. And then all of this was picked back up, and you can go down the rabbit hole as to whether Romania did that or other powers did that or how that happened. But all I can do is face the judicial system of Romania and trust in God and trust in justice. And what else can I do? I'm not going to run away. I'm not a coward. So you just have to face it and be a man and just get up every day and do what you got to do and pay for your kids and get rich and stay strong and train hard and see it as a blessing from God that gives you an opportunity to become a stronger, better version of yourself. All the hardship gr grows you. So I'm going to be a stronger man post this episode than I was beforehand. So I just have to see it as a blessing. I truly do see it in a way as a blessing. Yeah. I, that's how I approach it. Um, that's good. I'll look. Andrea, I, I, I got to ask. So obviously, you know, very outspoken. You were the most famous man in 2022, right? Uh, most Googled man, right? You beat out Trump and Kim Kardashian and everybody else. What comments was it that they had the biggest point of contention with? Well, they clipped a few of my comments and used them as an excuse. They weaponized some virtue saying that he's a misogynist or he's homophobic or he's whatever. Yeah. They use these buzzwords and they found a few particular clips that they used to weaponize against me. And they don't actually care about women. They, they don't. When they say you're a misogynist, they don't say that because they're truly interested and invested in the I, I, I think this video is old, though. It's new. I believe it's a new video, though. But he's still saying the same thing that he already spoke about. I already hear this. Well, being a females, not at all. They just want to weaponize their pretend virtue at you. Yeah. yeah. So that's what they did. But truthfully, I think the reason they didn't like me is because I inspired bravery amongst the populace. Influence. It's influence. I made the young boys of the world sit and think. Mm -hmm. and, and men would stand up now and say, no, I deserve better. No, I'm going to train hard. No, I will not accept that from a man, from a woman, from a job, from a government. I was inspiring bravery. And when you inspire bravery, effectively you're raising an army. And they saw it as an insurgency. They saw me as a national security threat. They saw people getting in large crowds and protesting under my name. They saw top G posters everywhere. And the government sat down and thought, this is a problem. And we have to deal with this problem. This man is inspiring rebellion or inspiring a degree of discontentment with the matrix organized and matrix purported agendas especially among the subgroup of the populace that they have the largest problem psyoping which is the young military age males they need men more than ever if you psyop women or you get the women to do something and get upset okay that's bad for our country of course because women have important jobs but when the men get upset you have a real big problem because you need the men to build the roads and go die in a war yep. you need to build the skyscrapers everything single thing around us is built by men this house was built by men the road that leads here was built by men the street lights were installed by men these cameras were built by men the store where the cameras you bought them from there was a guy it's electric wires that run the cameras was men it was all men so if you have men saying no we deserve better we have rights no, I want my wife to respect me. No, I'm not going to accept this garbage anymore. If you try and tell men not to be slaves, they start to panic. And the large power structures thought, well, let's do the standard operating playbook. Let's accuse him of a sexual crime. Let's make let's damage his influence. Let's make people at home think he's a bad person. Yeah. And let's throw him in a jail cell. And hopefully he'll sit there and learn his lesson and shut up. And that's what they attempted to do. And it wasn't necessarily any particular thing I said. It was just the influence I had amongst the subsect of the demographic that they fear the most. And we've seen many other people be accused of what? The same Great. thing. Russell Brand. Who's not accused of this? Yeah, now? who's not? Vince McMahon. Vi yo. We got yo, we got so many other people of status and power that have what? Influence. And they say, you know what? How do we bring them down softly but securely? Well, this is the scary thing. This is what I try and say to men in the world today. If you're watching this and you're a man. Nobody's I, safe. You No, but you need to genuinely understand those words and start to lose sleep over it. Because we'll say this and men will go, yeah, man, and then just go back to their life. No, you are not safe. Your money in your bank is not safe. Your mortgage is not safe. The properties you own are not safe. Your families who you take care of are not safe. If you upset a female at any point in the future ever, they are going to use it to destroy your life if they so choose. Now, if you're insignificant, perhaps they won't. Okay, so if you decide to go through life as a worm and stay unimportant, perhaps they won't do it. But if you want to be the kind of man who has any kind of status and who's well-known and be a king amongst the populace and live true to your heart and have an opinion and say no to the things you know are wrong, they will destroy your life. Your ability to speak freely is directly correlated to your insignificance. You can get away with not preparing for the worst and not preparing for Armageddon if you stay a fucking nobody. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a somebody, you better get ready. Yeah. You better get ready for permanent and never-ending war. I tweeted this the other day. You have two choices. You either stay a nobody or you go to war forever. And that's why we talk about this case. Then was says, man, when the case is over. I you know, one of his 
best expression that I heard is like, um, you can suffer as a nobody or you can suffer as somebody. Uh, th this one, one of my favorite uh, expression of uh, Andrew that he said so far, you can suffer as a nobody or you can suffer as a somebody and the choice is yours. It was all, it was always the choice, w always was the choice yours, like, you cannot say like society did this and did this. it's all the time the choice is yours you can choose whatever you want to be like he if the people who's not familiar with the message they can just go check some videos or old videos of him when he speak and uh, you're gonna see what he's saying like but try to uh, listen to it uh, in a full context context in a full like not not uh, cutting parts and stuff like this because cutting parts you're gonna take only uh, you know it's it's gonna be shaky other than that try to take it like this one you see a two hours video they're gonna take the, the shaky one and they're gonna put it yeah i understand this one because it's it's just give clicks it give clicks it give views and if the if they make the people hate him it's gonna get more clicks and I believe that he he could deliver his message in different way, because it's it's impossible. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 impossible. Uh, uh, smart guys like this uh, cannot choose a, a better way to deliver it. He chose this way to deliver it because he want to get hated by other people and he want to get more clicks. And to to be able to get more clicks, you need to be get hated. And that's why the the people who hate you dig in in your past, and that's they're gonna make your they send it to, oh, look to this man, massage, and look to this. For permanent and never ending war. I tweeted this the other day. You have two choices. You either stay a nobody or you go to war forever. And that's why we talk about this case. Then was this man, when the case is over, I don't think the case just ends. It's not going to be, I woke up, case is over. Woohoo. No, there's going to be something else, someone else. So maybe the Albanians will come before it's all over. Maybe it'll be a shoe out here at the compound. Maybe they'll arrest me for some other shit because I didn't shut up when they put me on bail. It's never going to end. So you either have to be a warlord and be ready for that, or you have to be quiet and go work in Starbucks and ask your wife politely for a hand job, very nicely. Please, 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 my love. I watched Sex in the City with you. Please, can I have a hand job? And I can't do that. I, I don't want to be that guy. So, and I don't think any man at home truly wants to be either, but you need to, you need to be brave enough to handle those things. There's no light without dark. You can't be praying for an exceptional life, which is the biggest mistake that people make, especially the young guys who are trying to make money. Mm -hmm. They're praying for an exceptional life, thinking that the exceptionalism is all going to be positive. And I argue the absolute opposite. If you want an exceptional car collection and an exceptional woman and live in an exceptional house, you're going to have an exceptional level of stress and exceptional bills and exceptional obligations yeah. and exceptional attacks from the robbers and the thieves and the government and the police and everyone else. So there's no light without dark. You have to decide what you want to do. And the only way to avoid these things is to stay an insignificant nobody. And I think that's the worst possible life a man can live is invisible. And most men are invisible. Most men are. I, I say this all the time. Every single time I go on a date with a girl and we're sitting in a restaurant, when we leave, I say, how many men do you think was in that restaurant? And she goes, oh, I don't know, three or four. <laughs> three or four. The other day, the other day I was speaking with my, uh, with my cousin yesterday. Yesterday, what the other day? Yesterday I was speaking with my cousin and he says, like, any woman there? And, uh, you know, he's living in Dubai right now. And he asked me, like, is, is he any woman here? You know, and I tell him, like, I really don't, have time for this shit ah, man, I'm married obviously and I don't know why he asked me that damn question but anyway you know cousin between cousin and I ask him the same thing like and and you and he says like uh, well my mind is like uh, I, I'm just trying to think how to do money right here because you know when you are around money you you're gonna have opportunities uh, business things you're gonna have opportunities so he says my mind is only about money and I tell him the same thing and like, I'm married and I'm thinking only about how to make the money and how to make businesses and how to make something else rather than thinking of this but as i'm saying like he says oh, men are invisible no it's not men are invisible they make themselves like pity you know they beg for dumb shit you just need to be a man why you need to beg for anything why you need to be begging why you need to beg this one well, I 
can't explain it, bro. Most men are. I, I say this all the time. Every single time I go on a date with a girl and we're sitting in a restaurant, when we leave, I say, how many men do you think was in that restaurant? And she goes, oh, I don't know, three or four. <laughs> three or four. There was there was 10 waiters who you didn't even see. <laughs> They're invisible to you. Yep. They, they don't even exist. He bought you a drink. He spoke to you. He asked you what you wanted to eat. I had to tell you to say please and thank you to his ass because you're fucking rude. You're 19. You ain't even fucking working. This dude's working 12-hour shifts. You're like, oh, water. I'm like, water, please. Fucking Get facts. some fucking man. Get some manners. What's wrong with facts. you? These girls. So if you're a man and you're acting together, you're invisible anyway. So you're either going to be an invisible nobody or you're going to be a warlord and you have to be ready for that war. I am ready to win this war and continue with my conquest of Earth and continue to try and inspire people to be the best. You know what? These kind of things is it's true because... Uh, Uh, okay, I will take my thing back. Uh, most men are invisible. You know, most men are invisible. But uh, I believe it is also, and you don't need to, as I said before, my point of view, my point, as I said it before, you don't need to make yourself pity, or you don't need to beg, or you don't need to chase things. The only thing, like Tony Montana said, chase power, to be, and chase money first. When you chase money, the power come. When the power comes, the girl comes. So chase only money. That's the only thing I'm recommend you to do, chase money. But not in a crazy way, not in a crazy way chasing money. You have you have other things to do. Like I know the better option to chase money. For example, I saw a lot of people making an OnlyFans. That's okay. That's the easy option you can make. Megan start making nude content. That's that's haram, fucking haram. Uh, going to stream, okay, streaming in like the people are doing it right now and that bullshit garbage thing, clowning thing, fuck no, that's, okay, that's maybe hard to gain that much popularity, but in the same time, it's garbage, there is nothing they can teach you, there is nothing they can give you, you're just giving your money to someone else, because in this world, there is, you know, like we say, like, there is a seller and there is a buyer, there is, the word is based on transaction, Even you are a buyer or you are a seller. So the guy who stream doing garbage content just give you this shit like, I don't know, he's streaming with crazy stuff. And you just giving him money just to see him going to the fucking toilet or dancing? Come on, bro. Then you tell why why my life is like this? Come on. Best version of themselves. And I am also very ready to go to fucking jail forever. I'm ready because it's not up to me. It's up to God. And if God decides I need to go to jail, then so be it. If I catch a 10-year stretch, it's going to derail my life for sure. But when I'm 65 or 70, I talk about the time I caught a 10-year stretch in Romania on some bullshit and lived amongst the cockroaches and the killers and the mental asylum. At least I'm going to have a story from it. At least I'm going to be a better version of myself. I'm not afraid of these people. I refuse to live in fear because this is a choice I made. I made this decision to be this man, and I understood exactly what it comes with. And a lot of people at the bottom see all of the benefits. They see our cars, see the private jets, they see the girls, they see the status. That wasn't they easy. They want all of that, but they don't want the negatives. And that's why they're never going to get it. Yep. Because on your way up, you're going to start getting hit with the negatives. You're going to be derailed. There's no way to get to the top without dealing with monumental levels of stress. I often say the reason a lot of people don't have the things they want is they couldn't handle the things they want. No, no, They I couldn't can. handle we the can. life that we is can. required to get the things they want. We they can. simply would get anywhere near it and start to panic and pussy out and just go on holiday and hide on a beach and delete their social media. Even comments. Bro, <laughs> mean comments. <bro. laughs> I've got street problems. You think I give a fuck about mean comments from some anon? <laughs> I, it's <laughs> difficult for me to Seriously. put into words how much I don't care. Mm. But there's people out there that do care. Yeah. And and then they think, oh, I want to be like Top G, but you can't handle a comment on the internet. <laughs> Bro, these, these people are born to lose. So you have to decide and you need to look in the mirror and really make a decision because I think perhaps... You know, if you're doing something right and if you're doing something right and you receive mean comments and you receive critics, critics that are not respectful means you're doing something right. Because... If you're doing something not right, you will not receive any critics, you will not receive any mean comments, and that's how you know that you're not in the right path, you know? So, uh, really don't care about anything saying about, because how you see yourself, it's not, like how others see you, it's not how you see yourself. If you see you f yourself like a superman, and others see you like weak, you don't care what are the other things, only care about your opinion, how you see yourself. If you see yourself as a superman, then I'm a superman. Just see yourself how you feel. Nobody can can tell you who you are, what to do, because nobody cares about your life. They can only criticize your life, but no one can... 
and I also believe if they criticize you so much, it means that they you're doing something that they wanted to do but they couldn't do. Perhaps if you want to build a life, choosing your life path and knowing which life path you want to go down is going to allow you to make be the most effective in the construction of that life. If you say, I can't handle that stress, I want to be somewhere in the middle, then accept it, accept the good and bad that comes with that, accept the kind of life you want to build and go do it. But don't sit there and say, I want to be top G, I want to live this great life, and you're not prepared for war. Because it's coming. And, I, you know, I, I want to say this because everyone tends to always, you know, say, oh, well, you know, the guy, you know, me too, the woman, believe all women, blah, blah, blah. Just just so you guys understand, right? So, Vince McMahon, for some of you guys that don't know, WWE owns it, etc. This woman came out and said that he trafficked her, right? Across state lines, blah, 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 because she would go, you know, in jets, by the way, all across the country in the WWE, travels everywhere. He gave her a settlement of $1 to $2 million, guys. He gave her $20,000 for surgery. A car. He gave her a brand new BMW. He gave her a job. He gave her expensive gifts, yep. jewelry, etc. Okay, he gave her all these gifts, and he was sending her roses every other week, right? Then this woman, right? He tells her, "Hey, look, me and Linda McMahon, she found out about you. We can't do this anymore. You gotta stop." Yeah. She waits like two years, and then she drops a lawsuit on him. When? When they're about to have the Royal Rumble, right? Which is the WWE's second biggest event after WrestleMania. They're about to go public with TKO, and The Rock is about to become a board member. Right? So all these big business things happen, and then she decides to drop the lawsuit. We all know what happens with these lawsuits. Hey, we're going to go public with this unless you decide to pay us X, Y, Z. He probably said, fuck off. I already gave you $2 million earlier, bitch, and I made you sign an NDA. I'm not getting with it. So, guys, and here's the other thing. Everyone on YouTube is jumping on this girl's side saying Vince Man's evil, whatever. Look, maybe he has some weird sexual fetishes. You know, it is what it is. But regardless, it was consensual. But the fact that they're running around saying that he's a trafficker now... Bro, you, you know the worst part though? They just throw that term around. It's the public image because his legacy is destroyed. Yeah. Because of some dumb articles that paint him in a bad light. Look, for example, Andrew was the most Google man in the world, right? Yeah. Inspirational. Obviously, he made content, but that level of fame and I want to say, I want to say influence. Influence was so big that it couldn't handle the truth, bro. And it's it's crazy, bro. Yeah, and most people at home simply can't do what this t-shirt says. You can see it on topg.com. Resist yeah. the slave mind. Yeah. There are a huge subsect. Please understand as you walk through the mall or you walk amongst a busy beachfront that a huge subsect of the populace are slaves. And they cannot resist the slave mind. They will tell you and repeat anything they are told without critical thinking. Mm. They will not sit and analyze not the situation. Look at the evidence. They will not look at the evidence. They will simply repeat it. I argue right now that if they were to start putting on all the MSM that the sky is green, you would find a percentage of the population who would begin to sit and argue with you that the sky is green. Yeah. And I talk about the matrix and how you need to resist the slave mind. The matrix is the terminology I use because in the matrix, they purport a false version of reality in which people believe inside of their minds so that their body heat can be harvested for the machine minds and they can be distracted long enough movie. for their organic material to be used and discarded. Yeah, and it's exactly the same for the people at home. They believe exactly what they're told in the news. They don't nah. have any clue about how the world really works or the truth about what the, what's being done to them. They're good slaves. They pay their taxes. They may be the... You know, the good things about... Uh, well, the good things about Algeria, my country, is that we don't give a fuck about politics and we don't believe politics in the first place. We, we don't care about politics, we don't believe politics, we don't hear, we don't believe what we hear in the news. For us, all these kind of things are garbage. We don't have time for this. So, every, you find two classes or three classes, maybe. So, you're going to find, we're not, okay, maybe, we are in, everybody is in, virtual, in the virtual life. Uh, as uh, like phones and shit, we all obsessed with these kind of things. But you're not gonna find like we believe the news, like we were hearing the news, because we, we we've been learned that all politicians are liars, and you don't, especially from our government, we don't care about the government when they what they say, because everybody is a liar there, and all politicians are like that. So you don't need to believe anybody, especially the news. We don't believe. So two categories: either you are working. Or you watch a football in coffee shops. We don't have other. Or you play. As for me, I was playing and watching and working. Yeah, do them all three. So you, this kind of things in news is really good in Algeria. So we don't complain about the news. We don't believe the news. That's why 
when when I heard the first time what happened to him, take him to jail, and the, the, when I when when I heard that when they spoke about uh, the the lawsuit that he have, and I said like, oh, okay, fuck it, that's obviously it's garbage. It's not true. It's obviously it's not true. That's what I said in my mind anyway. Depressed and unhappy, but their taxes are paid. They sit in their sexless marriages until they eventually die. And if anyone who thinks the Matrix isn't real, you can see people in real time turn into agents. In the Matrix, when you try and speak against the Matrix or do something to damage the Matrix, a person who's plugged in becomes an agent instantly. Bro, during COVID, you saw agents. I would sit and have a perfectly normal, logical conversation with somebody and actually think, oh, that's quite a smart person, until I said COVID's bullshit. Yeah. What do, you mean it's bullshit? what do you mean it's bullshit? My grandma was sick. I was like, bro, your grandma was sick. Your grandma's, grandma's always get sick. My grandma was sick before COVID. Yeah. And she'll be sick after COVID. Yep. What are you talking about? No, she's 96. She died. What does that have to do with me saying that they shouldn't be locking me, a healthy military-age male, in my house? What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. And they become an agent. They, they swap. And these are the people who are walking around saying, human trafficker, human trafficker, I am an agent for the Matrix. He's a human trafficker, lover boy method. What does that mean? I don't know. Andrew's a misogynist. What does misogynist mean? I don't know. <laughs> yes. Misogynist, misogynist. Bro, they are fucking slaves, these people. They are slave-minded yep. individuals. And that is what's truly scary because they managed to do this to the population. We're not even in the AI age yet. They haven't even put the chips in our brains yet. These people are supposed to be free-minded and free-thinking. And they sit there and just watch the news. And believe it. Or watch a YouTube video. And they don't sit there and go, Vince McMahon, a very famous billionaire, and he bought her a whole bunch of presents. Well, if a woman gets with a billionaire boyfriend, she probably expects presents, yeah. And they had a sexual kink, and they did it together for years. Yep. And he paid her endless money, and she enjoyed it. And now that the money's dried up, hmm. she's upset. Hmm. They, that doesn't cross their mind. They're just gonna sit there and repeat human trafficker, human trafficker, slave. Andrew, it gets better, four. bro. It gets better. The the Amer the public is so stupid that she actually listed in her lawsuit all the gifts he gave her, <laughs> and people still sit there and call him a trafficker. Bro. I think to summarize the slave mind is not asking the question why. If you ask why this is happening, and you do some summary, uh, you know, I want to say skills of deduction, you can see overall why it's happening. If you see why it's happening, you can say, okay, you know what? This makes sense. But if you don't yeah. ask the question why, which you're I like, oh, I believe before. everything the I Royal see. The Rumble, TKO, yeah. going public, the stock market, hitting the stock market, the rock ask being the question a why. Like, and and the, the thing that scares me is that she put all this in her lawsuit that Vince McMahon had given her millions of dollars. They gave her $20,000 for surgery. Then he gave her all this. And the people still sit there, have the gall to say, he's a trafficker. Why do I say all this? I say all this to bring it back full circle. Guys, we live in a retarded world where most of you don't even know what human trafficking is. I fucking investigate. I know what human trafficking is, motherfuckers. I yeah. arrested real human traffickers, okay? And let me tell y'all, I've read his case extensively. I've read the Vince McMahon case extensively. It's not fucking human trafficking when it's consensual, motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're getting to, guys, where a girl can retroactively withdraw consent and say, well, you flew me out here, so now we're just trafficking, even though it's consensual back then. We're getting into scary times. And the thing that scares me even more is the general public don't have critical thinking skills to go and look at the documents and be like, what the fuck, bitch? This now, ain't no trafficking. And that's the only way to keep men safe is if the public don't believe it. And then you, you said the word consent, which is an interesting word. Do you ever have consent if it can be retrospectively revoked? No. Do you ever have... They talk about, you need to get consent before sex. And we always joke about the fact you're supposed to get out a piece of paper before sex and ruin the mood and her sign. NDAs. Yeah. Even if you did that, yeah. if she decides to retrospectively remove that consent and take you to court, regardless of the fact she signed a piece of paper... She signed an NDA in Vince's case. That's right. So you never even have consent as a man anymore in the West. It doesn't matter. You don't allow consent. Consent's not something you can ever have if they can retrospectively snatch it from you. So that means if you're watching a home, every woman you've ever had sex with, you have effectively raped if she so decides because you never had consent. Oh, let's have you more I mean, fun. Would Gene you... E. Carroll, yeah. who accused Trump, Alhamdulillah to be CNN Muslim. and told Anderson Cooper, rape isn't physical. 100%. Trevor Bauer. Can, can, like, you literally sit there and you're telling me, if you look at the legal definition of, of rape, it's penetration that is forced. This girl's saying, oh no, it's not physical. It could be emotional. And then she used that to go against the president of the fucking United States, and she won the lawsuit, guys. For all you fucking idiots out there that say, oh, well, I really hate Trevor, blah, blah, blah. Guys, you got women out here literally saying, oh, yeah, rape isn't physical. Trevor Bauer, bro, that girl told her friend, I'm gonna go sleep with him and finesse him. Yeah. And it says, oh, he, he, he raped me. There's like, a big on. bag. You told your friend you're gonna go sleep with him. 
And they say he's worth he, 52 million or some crazy, shit. Crazy, bro. His whole career is finished because of that shit. It's wild, man. But it just goes to show, right? How a girl feels in the moment. If she changes her mind 10 years later, go fuck you up in the future. And here's the thing for all the losers out there, right? Some of y'all might not like Andrew. Oh, I don't like his message. Oh, I don't like the uh, misogyny. Whatever the fuck you want to say. This could be your brother. This yeah. could be your father. This yeah. could be your uncle. This could be anybody getting yep. accused of this shit. Could be you. Could, could be, be your you. son. Could be your son. Could be you. Yep. Like, guys, there's a serious war against men right now because they don't need to have proof. You got women literally running around and literally saying one of the elements of the crime of rape, it doesn't have to be physical. It's how I feel. Yeah, how they feel. Completely subjective garbage. And then you add in subjective crimes, which exist, like, I don't know. And the way, I don't know about America, but they certainly exist in the UK. Emotional manipulation. Oh, yeah. All these subjective crimes. You, oh, he never touched me. He emotionally manipulated me. What does that mean? Yeah. Oh, that means that if I tried to go drinking with a bunch of other men, he told me it was wrong and made me feel bad about it. And now I'm sad. And now I'm at the police station. And now there's a report. And now he's arrested. And now he's in the news. And now he needs a lawyer. And now he needs money to defend himself. And now I've wasted three years of his life. And he's lost his job because of this sexual assault case. But, bro, you, none of you are safe. As a man, absolutely none of you are safe anymore. And it's kind of scary because people say, okay, I accept that, Andrew. What's the answer? I don't really know. Yeah. The only answer you can have is to be such a great, fantastic, and righteous person that the women you interact with are also great, righteous, fantastic women. And well, the answer is not that hard. If he doesn't have the answer, I have the answer. <laughs> That's ego. That's ego speaking. No, it's, it's the truth. Be a religious man and be a really religious man or a woman. Be really religious. Be a f f f fearful of God. If you are fearful, then you will not do the dumb shit that they are doing. Okay, uh, he's saying uh, nobody is safe, but listen, guys, be religious. You will not have time for this shit. You will pray five times a day. You will work. You have children. You have wife. You will not have time for this shit. The answer is God. Always come back to God. That's what the answer is. Come back to God, and you, you, your life gonna go to play to her place. It's gonna. And that you trust they will never betray you. But besides that, you're pretty much fucked. Yeah. yeah. Have, have, to have trust in God. Even with receipts. We, sh we showed as, as well the footage of, you know, your cameras. Showing the girls leaving, coming back. And even still then, they can't see the facts in their traffic, faces. but they went shopping. It's crazy. Bro, crazy. traffic, but they went shopping. Yeah, that's right. Bought pizza, came back. Tr shopping, everything. It's just wild, man. It's scary, honestly. It is scary. And I don't know, I don't know how most men at home are not worried about this and panicking about this. And then you, you can tie this into a bunch of other things. But one yeah, of the reasons reach. why I'm so anti even like... I guess if I think about it, if I analyze my own state of mind, mm -hmm. I've always, when I was doing the podcast before this arrest, I was always saying haram and I was always repulsed by these girls who were sexually promiscuous, etc. But now I find it truly repulsive because I see it as a, a, a danger sign. If a girl messages me on Inst one, of, I don't have Instagram, but let's say a girl messages one of the fan accounts. Yeah, I think he has Instagram. Email. Yeah. She goes, look at my Insta. I miss you. You're the best man. And I click on her Insta and there's... She's been to Saint Tropez. She's been to Dubai. She's been to Miami. She's been to wherever. She's been to Aspen, Colorado, and Courchevel. She's flown all of these places. I just think all these men have flown you around, and now you want me to buy you shit and fly you around. And what if I stop buying you shit? I just, I just look at them and think, oh nah, that's a, that's a police case. Yeah. And every single woman I look at who's not humble and respectful now, I just see as a police case waiting to happen. So I refuse to talk to women anymore because I'm like, no, you're all trouble. Mm. It's worse than just haram now. You can destroy my life. And I think a woman who is genuinely humble and honest and tries to preserve her sanctimoniousness regarding sexual promiscuity is less likely to make these kind of attacks. I can't exactly tell you why that is, but I think we'd all agree. A girl who sleeps with less men is less likely to go and start chasing a man for money and making a big scandal and all this garbage. But these women who sleep... You know, to be honest, I, I like to li I like him from time to time listen to Andrew Tate, but... Uh... Between the Tate brother, I prefer Tristan because he doesn't speak about this message for so long and he doesn't speak about this kind of thing. So he keep it all the time funny things for me. Yeah, That's why I like to listen to him. He speak about fashion, about this, you know. Andrew speak only her. Yeah, but it's both of them are good anyway. Both of them are really good speaker. Sleep with a bunch of men. They're fucking predators, bro. They They've are lost dangerous. their morals. They've lost their morality. They don't yeah. care about destroying your life because they have no... 
link to you. There's no energy core between you and them. They're just fucking you for fucking. They're demons, they money. bro. They're demons. So if you're a man now who's out here sleeping with girls who are promiscuous, you're not just making a mistake because they're promiscuous and they're not going to be a good partner. You're making a mistake because they can destroy your life. Mm. Promiscuity is now a genuine, it's more than a red flag. It's a landmine. Wow. I won't go anywhere near a promiscuous woman ever for the rest of my, I never want, I was never going to anyway because I'm high enough status. I don't have to. But now when I see a woman who acts that way and thinks that way, bruv, no, sir, there is no way you could convince me to go near a woman who's been with a bunch of men. Cause I just see them as a, a court case waiting to happen. That's, that's the world we now live in, especially when you have status and money, they want their bills paid and you're going to pay them whether they like another. it or not. Yeah. yeah. You're going to pay it. And the government love it, bro. I, I have no scientific proof to back this up but i've come to the theory one of the reasons governments love this shit so much is let's say you're a very rich man and you're international and all your taxes are set up right and all your things are in order and everything's done you pay your taxes you do your thing whatever you get hit with some big case and you have to pay a million dollars a month in legal fees which trust me it's not that much legal fees your lawyers are going to pay their tax 50 percent on the dock because they have to because they're part of the bar association and they have particular spe special bank accounts that can be monitored, et cetera. So the government just sits and goes, ah, oh, cool. Well, we can get $6 million out of him if he has a year of $1 million legal fees. That's 50% tax rate. So th the government loves it. They get to extract resource. Lawyers get rich. Girl lies. Nothing happens to her. She gets to fuck with your life. There's only one person who gets fucked. The man. You. Yep. Your lawyers are fine. The government's fine. She's fine. You are the one at the bottom of the pole getting fucked. And that you're the one it. paying for everybody. And you're paying for all of it. The this judge is the, being there, the lawyers being there. Oh, the courtroom, the big fancy courtroom, the oak mahogany walls, you're paying for everything. This is the biggest wealth transfer we've seen where women come into play as tools and pawns to attack rich men, take their money, and then come back to normal, literally. And there's no consequences for them making these accusations. None. You know? Like, if that's the crazy part. And if there's no consequences to anything in life, you're going to keep doing it, right? If there's no consequences to stealing, you're going to steal. If there's no consequences to robbing houses, you're gonna rob houses. I'm like, imagine you removed law, you'd see how quickly people will do bad and heinous things without consequence. The purge, the literally. Purge. And we're telling women that it is now a purge on men without consequence, and you expect them not to do it? There's no consequence. So why wouldn't they do it? That's a basic general, that's a law of the universe that can be applied to both men and women. If they can act without consequence, they have no reason not to. For them, it's a two hour, interview one afternoon at a police station for you it's four years of your fucking life andrew i got a question for you that first night obviously you know i didn't do nothing to these fucking like what the fuck is going on here that first night you, with the roaches the noises because people don't understand that like jail can be very like it's crazy man you got people in there screaming crying etc it's a very difficult place to be that first night right how was that especially knowing that like oh what the fuck i didn't do this shit yeah, it, it was interesting because I guess at the beginning, the first few days, I had faith I'd be out soon. Right. So the first few days, as bad as they were, I was like, ah, oh, it's, it's temporary. I'll be out tomorrow. I think it was like a month and a half in, I, it really started to hit me. I was like, I might be here for a very long time. I might really be here for a very long time and not be able to get out. And I mean, it's a Romanian jail cell. I don't, I don't need to describe what that is to people. It's exactly how you imagine it to be. It's a Romanian jail cell. This is the poorest country in Europe. They don't have a mental health system like the West does. So they mix the two together. If you do something weird or you act weird, you go to jail. So it's a mental health asylum effectively along with being a jail cell. Wow. If you're a drug addict or rehab, you go to jail. So you're full of drug addicts. Mental you're there people, with everybody. Pray, you're there with everybody. Everybody. And I, I didn't feel like I fit in there. I didn't belong there. Right. But jail is very much a condensed hyper. It's a hyper condensed version of life. And you need a strong mind so you don't attack yourself and a strong body so no one else attacks you. And it's the same in the world out here. But jail is just a hyper, a hyper condensed version of that. And you just have to be the man who's like, look, I'm going to treat you with respect. You better treat me with it back. Did anybody try you while you're in there? I don't think so. I think me, my brother and I are very well known. And we also have a vibe about us. Like, we're not violent people, but if you if you want a problem, there will be a problem. We're not going to ever back down. And I think that that's the same with most of the world. Everyone wants to fight the man who doesn't want to fight. But if yeah. you're the guy who will fight, people don't often want it. Speaking of strong minds, though, uh, I can say this. I think Myra can, too, as well. You're the same person that we met before, Joe. Literally. I mean, I, I like to think I am, but you know what? There's mm -hmm. there's certain, there's certain there's ways I've definitely changed. Mm -hmm. Before jail, I was a lot more sociable. I was out a lot more. Mm. I don't like people. I don't like going out now. I used to like go to a restaurant. It would be busy. If I walk into a busy restaurant now, I want to go home. Mm. I don't like people. I don't like being around people. I don't like crowds anymore. 
Uh, I'm, I'm weird about s- stupid things because I have so many cockroaches and bed bugs in my bed all the time. I'm weird about making sure my bed is clean, like changing the sheets twice a day and weird shit. And you pick up like, like weird habits. So I wouldn't say I'm exactly the same, but I'd like to think that I'm a better version of myself and perhaps I'm not, but I'm going to frame it that way. I'm going to frame it that jail made me better. And if I go back, it'll make me better again. But trial and tribulation is designed for you to grow from. I don't think men grow from anything other than trial and tribulation. And the best men have had terrible lives. And I have to see it as a blessing. I don't know how else to frame it. I I don't think it'd be masculine for me to sit here and cry my eyes out about it. I'd just be like, I didn't deserve it. No, I didn't deserve it. But God gave it to me. So thank you very much. And I'm going to come out a better version of myself. I've never done so many push-ups. I was doing a thousand push-ups a day, bro. That takes a long time. Sheesh. I'm, I'm busy working now, but in jail, you can get them done. So it is what it is. I'm push-up master now. <laughs> so like, you just have to see the positives of it. But yeah, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a pretty surreal experience for the first week or two. And then after that, it started to dep- the depression, if it was a real thing, started to creep in. But you have to make a conscious decision that you're not going to live that way or be that person. Right. When I heard depression knock on my cell door, I rejected them and said, no, I refuse to be depressed. And I was nice to everybody. And I smiled to everyone. And the old lady who brought me my dinner, I was make, I was very nice to her. And I complimented her. And I was nice to the guards. And I just tried to smile and be as positive as possible. Ties back into what we we're saying earlier about how men find their happiness through other people. When I felt the worst, I would do my best to make other people happy because it made me happy. When I felt the worst, I'd give away the most cigarettes or I'd give the biggest compliment to the dinner lady or the, or the, when the guard would come, I'd say, oh, hi, guys. Yeah, really nice to meet you. I'd be as nice as possible to other people when I felt bad because it made me feel better. And that's how you get through it. You just have to get along with people. And it's kind of weird that you can have a jail full of killers and psychos. Bro, I, I, I accidentally bumped into people who had killed three or four people. And, and, and he'd apologize to me and I'd apologize to him. This guy's a, this guy's a killer. And we'd apologize to each other and move on. Mm. It's kind of strange how the, people can just get along when you're in that kind of scenario. I mean, it can go very wrong, but it can also go pretty right. And it was it was a unique, surreal experience. I don't think many people from the West have ever been to jail in an Eastern European country like that. Oh, yeah. What, what, what would you say? What were the top things that you took away from jail like that, that made you learn things about yourself that you might have not known? I think I learned a lot about basic human behaviors not only my own but a lot of them i think you the thing that was most pertinent to me was how often we deliberately distract ourselves in the outside world Mm. if you start to think a thought that you don't like you pull out your phone or you go on your computer Mm. or you go to the gym or if you start to think of someone you message them or you call them or if you think of a problem you message the person who can fix the problem you have instant access to so many things Only in jail was I stuck with a thought about somebody and I couldn't contact them or stuck with a thought I didn't want to have and I couldn't distract myself very easily. Here in the outside world, if you're sitting at home watching this and you start thinking of your ex and you miss her a little bit, you turn on the Nintendo and then it's done. But in jail, it's not done. You're stuck with it. And that's why all these men, I mean, I think we had three or four suicides when I was in there, but a lot of the people would kill themselves because you're stuck in this loop in your mind. If you don't have the mental control to force yourself to do push-ups or force yourself to be happy and distract yourself with something asinine or force yourself to change your own thoughts, you're going to sit there in a cycle of depression and sadness. So I think the thing I learned the most is how distracted we are in the outside world and how often we deliberately distract ourselves. All of us do it. You won't notice. Next time you start to think anything remotely 1% negative, I guarantee you, you grab your phone. Mm. That's what you'll do. If you're on a jet, if you're on a plane and turbulence gets bad, you'll just, oh, let me put a movie on. It's just what we do as humans. But in jail, you can't do that. You're like, well, that's shit. Yeah, that is shit. Cockroaches. Fuck. <laughs> and you're stuck with it. I guess it's a cool, it's a mental test. It's certainly interesting. One I, thing I noticed from seeing you now, right, after being out versus before, you're on your phone way less. Yeah, I, I, I way less. Yeah, I am on my phone. Oh my god, Andrew, when I first met you, bro, yo, Myron, this thing goes on his phone from the airport all the way to the crib, bro. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. But that's one thing I noticed right away. Yeah. It's like you're on your phone way less. Yeah, that's true. Like jail, pretty much like. I, I made that. I, yeah, when I first came out of jail, I didn't like using it at all. And now I, I find myself slowly getting addicted to it again. And we have a lot of things to do, all of us men, and we have businesses yeah. to run yeah. and girls to talk to, and we have work. things to do and work, yeah. et cetera. And we use our phones. But, I mean, it was kind of cool that conversations were interesting again. My brother and I, and also some of the other guys in there, there were guys in there who'd killed three or four people or had moved tons of cocaine or whatever it was. I, I had six, seven-hour-long conversations that were riveting. 
Like I can't having a conversation now. You're, you're, it's interesting, okay, but you're half looking at your phone and you're half thinking about what you're gonna do afterwards. And you True. order some food halfway through. But in jail, you can talk to someone like, like it's amazing, and you yeah. hear stories from people, and you're like, whoa, like a two-hour story, and talking is interesting again. People socialize. It's really weird how in the outside world, how broken we are. We can't even socialize with each other properly. If you go to jail long enough, you're going to learn about fraternity and brotherhood and conversations and all the stuff that people used to value, you value in jail. The laughing and the jokes and making fun of each other, all those great things that we we have a version of out here in, out here in the free world, mm -hmm. but they're heavily watered down. Whereas in jail, bro, if you get if you hear a good joke, you're laughing for three hours. Yeah, your brother. There's nothing else. There's nothing else, bro. There's, it, and it could be the stupidest joke in the world. So, someone will ask for a Pringle, and you'll throw them an empty Pringle tube, and everyone will laugh at them. And it's funny for like 45 minutes for some reason because there's just nothing else going on in the outside world. We're just too easy to entertain. We all have a degree of ADHD, and we're all permanently distracted, and we're all chasing <laughs> dopamine, and it's just a different reality. It's different. You just in Tate, your brother. Yeah. yeah. How important is brotherhood? Because obviously you're in a cell with your brother, telling stories probably from the past, past experiences. How important was your brother being there for you in jail? Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't have wished for a better cellmate. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't get better than that. We never argued. We never disagreed. My brother has a superpower. My superpower is I care about everything all the time, and I'm very yeah, we heard this nitpicky. Bit. I want everything done right, and I get stressed bit. and trying to find a way to escape, and I want everything done my way. And my brother's superpower is he doesn't care about anything. Yeah, no. yeah, that's that's the, people, he's yeah. fearless, bro. People he's think, fearless. People think we're the same, but we're not. His superpower is that he really did not care, and if I felt like tapping into his energy, I could. If he I felt about it now, still. Yeah, yeah. If I felt myself too stressed, I mean, I'm sitting there reading the case file, and I'm writing, I'm reading, I'm reading Romanian law, and I'm translating it word by word with the dictionary, and I'm trying to get myself out. And he's just sitting there watching Judge Judy. Didn't care. We had a little TV in the corner, and the, ch the channels would randomly change. And if Judge Judy came on, he'd be like, "Yes, real justice." And he'd just sit there. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't care at all. So if I wanted to stop myself real caring justice. and calm down, then I would just no. tap into his energy. So I mean, he was a fantastic cellmate to have. The worst person you can have in jail is someone who's going to be like, "Oh, bro, this is unfair. This is your mistake. Yeah. Oh, my life's ruined." Like uh, a moaner. It's mm. like going to war. If you're in the trenches, the last thing you need the person next to you crying their eyes out because you're getting shot at. It's like you need you need happy people, and Tristan was fantastic at that. Yo, Martin, you think we, we would do good in jail? Just me and you? It would suck. <laughs> what do you think, Andrew? <laughs> Us in jail. What do you think? I think you'd be Tristan and he'd be me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. I think you'd be all like, nah, but you get upset about your bitches. You'd be like, ah, oh, where's, my, where's my chick at? <laughs> that, uh, you're calling her. She's in the like, <laughs> You gotta get beyond all that shit. Bro. Yeah, you, gotta, yeah. you gotta stop caring about what the women are up to. Because a lot of that also, I'm telling you, a lot of the men in there were depressed because of chicks. I saw guys call their wife and they'd argue in Romanian. I don't know what they were saying. Mm -hmm. Or Russian. There's a lot of Russians in there. And they're yelling, 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 and they'd hang up the phone, and I'd, I'd see the look in his eyes. He wanted to kill himself. Damn. What's his chick saying? Pay the rent. You can't take care of us anymore. I have a new man. You're going to be there for years. I don't know what she's saying. But, bro, these you think heartbreak's bad. Try heartbreak in jail. Bro, you think heartbreak's bad out here where you can go get a new bitch and message girls on Instagram and drive your car around and hang out with your boys. Try heartbreak in jail. That's tough. And, and, and if your woman's ever going to leave you, that's when she's going to leave you. When you hit the jail cell and you can't pay her bills anymore and she wants to go to the club with her friends, that's that's when all that's when the real relationship problems start. So I saw some real heartbreak, bro. I saw some real sadness in that place. And it's 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 scary. It's crazy. I'm lucky. I, I wasn't in that position, but a lot of men were. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll read chats real quick. And then. Uh, yeah. And then. Yeah. And then. And then, guys, from this point forward, we're going to read uh, 100 and up just so that we could because we got a lot to talk about here. But we'll read the ones that came through from before. Just uh, we got you on and just go ahead. Fresh we got a bunch in the mod chat. Yeah. Uh. Diglett says, where's the vodka? Sir Diglett. That's for these We're guys. We're going to talk about that here uh, as well. Hey, I don't know. I, I Soto J that. says, what brand is Andrew Tate's black t-shirts? What brand is that? Yeah, Resist the Slave Mind. This is my t-shirt. And I like that anyone who's a fan of mine can wear a symbol of resistance against the Matrix. You can access it at tape, ta uh, sorry, at topg.com. Hmm. Also at cobratate.com, there's a link, but topg.com and you can wear it. And I feel like if you make a public declaration as a man, it's massively powerful for you. If you tell the Matrix that you're going to resist the slave mind, you tell all the people around you you're going to resist the slave mind, it's good it becomes at marketing. much easier for you to do exactly that. It's like promising people you're going to go to the gym. It's the reason you tell them and make that promise is so that you have the motivation inside of yourself. So I wear this T-shirt just to remind myself and remind everybody around me that I will resist the slave mind to the day I die. Harry Boy says, WFNF, WTATES, Top G, can you tell my boy D. Smith stop being a simp? 
<laughs> D Smith, what's he doing? I don't know who is he. <laughs> he just randomly said that. I don't know what, he, what D he's Smith, doing. D Smith, stop being a simp. There you, there you go. go. Lauren says, CEO Network represents. Greetings from Warsaw. Shout out to you, Fresh. Shout out to you, bro. Abel A says, let's go. Boys are back. Giving me 2021 vibes. FNF vibes. Shout out to you. Uh, Durag Myron says, what go on, brothers? Big man things. Real hey, bad man. Real. Uh, TSJ says, big fan of FNF and the Tate. I'm 24. Never been in a fight in my adult life. Any chance that I can spar Myron so I can re review my, uh, revive my first adversity as a man? Why do you want your ass kicked? Who wants to fight Myron? Well, bro, but this is another thing about a lot of these questions and stuff that people send. Yeah. I actually loved, one of the best clips I saw in a long time was Justin Waller. He made a clip. I don't know if he was on your podcast or whose podcast he was on. Mm. But everyone kept asking him about girls. And he, uh, was that your podcast? It was one of his Ask Me Anything. Yeah. Uh, oh, it was Ask Me Anything. Yeah. I was on one of them with him as well when he spazzed out on them for run, asking about Oh, us. I love that. He's like, 14, 15 questions about girls. All you guys are obsessed with trying to get pussy. You're all losers. That's why you can't get pussy. Like, do you have anything else you care about? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get these. So true. And sometimes these questions come in. You're 24. You've never had a fight in your life. Okay, well, I guarantee there's a boxing gym or an MMA gym or a taekwondo gym. Go or a and try gym yourself. 10 minutes drive. So you made a conscious decision not to do that. And then you want to send stupid challenges to someone famous like Myron, knowing they're never going to be picked up on. You don't want to fight anybody. You don't want to fight Myron either. You just want to talk shit. That's true. It's just garbage. <laughs> Go do it then. I can tell you this, bro. You don't want to fight Myron. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> uh, G Bar Stennis says, I appreciate the work you guys have done. Uh, keeping me on the right track. Four years ago, I learned to get my shit together and in mark, I'm making more money than what I expected from before. I don't do much more. Shout out to you, bro. 100 bucks, by the way. Don DeMarco. Shout out to you, nice. bro. Uh, Myron Gaines says, Yo, Myron, one of your friends told his community to spam his name in his stream and the last stream. That's why it's best to stay away from cuckolds. Oh, I, I, I know what he means. Yeah, uh, he's talking about, okay. <laughs> yeah. Kinga says, Hey, bros, hope you're doing well. What advice would you give to guys who have a speech impediment, like myself? It is a struggle every day. Could you possibly talk about this topic in detail? Please, cheers. We will talk about it in detail. Yeah, we another will. Another episode. Uh, Mr. Tate. If the chessboard is the Matrix, who represents the king or the for the Matrix? And shout out to Myron and Walter. It's Tor from the Out Party. Yeah, that that's a good question, I guess. I, I, I don't think there's necessarily a king of the Matrix. But, and you know, another thing I don't want people to under, misunderstand about me or misconstrue. Mm. We're, the whole world is made from humans, and humans are trying to construct a version of humanity which has some semblance of law and order and fairness and the matrix itself is broken and it's certainly unfair like all the reasons we just described but we do i guess if you're a normal enough guy and you live a normal enough life you can believe in some semblance of justice and there's some degree of peace outside depending where you live mm -hmm. we have all these competing power structures that are trying to create a degree of safety for us to live under. But truthfully, only God is going to be able to give you true justice and give you true peace of mind and true peace. And you need to be the kind of person who makes a decision because the matrix requires a certain degree of the populace to believe in it. And I don't even think the world would be a good place if everybody's mind was free. Yeah. I, I, I really say this often. You need if, slaves. You need slaves, bro. You need the matrix minded. When I see somebody repeating the human trafficker garbage, I sit and say, good, because we need people like you to flip the burgers. <laughs> so I'm glad you exist because I don't want to wash my own car. Shovel. So go do that. You need the stupid people who believe in the system because the goal as a man is to become so rich and influential that you can use the system to your advantage. You need the system to exist. I'll be very honest. I have a lot of people who work for me and I have a very fortunate life. And if I want to fly in a private jet, I don't want to fuel that plane or clean that plane or maintain that plane. I want someone else to do it for me. Mm -hmm. So you need the matrix to exist. Of course you do. But you have to decide if you want to be the kind of the person who operates for the matrix, for the benefit of the matrix and the benefit of the few rich people who exploit the matrix, which are the people with massive power or the people who have escaped it. Or if you want to be the kind of person who can escape it themselves, it's a conscious decision to make. But the matrix is always going to exist and I'm glad it exists. And if you want to stay a lazy idiot and flip burgers, thank you, because I like burgers. That's fine by me. <laughs> All right. Next. Uh, Man Jot again says, say what you want about these guys. I'm more successful in life because of them. I'm in Dubai for a year. How can I go about joining the War Room? It would be an honor to connect with you guys as well, like-minded folks. Yeah, the War Room's available at CobraTate.com, and the War Room is basically a fraternity of men who understand how the world works and are trying to do be the best version of themselves. And I think that since the dawn of human time, it's always ever been about brotherhood. I think brotherhood gives you a sense of peace. It gives you a sense of purpose. It gives you a sense of strength, just like we talked about earlier. I will try to enter the War Room in the future, but just for curiosity, how to see how it is inside um, 
but I will, uh, but not now. In the future, once I start making uh, money, then I will try to think about it. For the moment, I'm balancing between everything. They're about the resilience against matrix attacks. That's going to come from brotherhood. And it's always been a band of brothers against the forces of evil. It's never been any different. It doesn't matter if you were trying to defend a besieged city or besieging a city itself. It was you and your boys and your weapons trying to stick up for what they believed was right. And if you're the kind of person who is isolated without a strong network or fraternity in the world today, you're due to be crushed by the fraternities and power structures which exist. All right. Yeah. And the last few here. Sonny Faze says, the base mother wants to interview you, Top G. Also, it's life for Sneeko. Strickland, this you first. Would you ever get box Strickland? Me? Yeah. I don't know, bro. I don't know what Everyone's it, well, trying to drag me he... into fights all the time. I'm, I, I... <laughs> bro, what's his deal? Why the hell did he like go on a fucking like? Who knows, bro? Hey, and for no reason, man. Who I, knows, bro? I, I, I could, I could spar. I could, I could do a big fight and make ten, twenty million dollars, whatever. That's not worth my time, but that's the money that would be generated. And everyone's trying to drag me into a fight because I they did want it you for to a long fight, time. fight Jake. They want me to fight, but I feel like people say, "Hey, man, you've retired. Don't you want to fight anymore?" And I don't think they understand if they actually pay any attention to the life I'm living or the things I've just said. I'm in a fight. I'm already in a fight. Mm -hmm. when you don't you don't drag when you're fighting a guy on the street, you don't ask some other random halfway through. You don't start a punch up with a guy on the street and then go, Hey, you wanna fight? Yeah. Well, you're busy. So yeah. I'm in a fight and I don't think the fight's gonna end anytime soon. And I have very little interest in trying to do any other kind of fights for entertainment. I think my fight is larger and bigger than some stupid boxing match or a sparring competition or some views on the internet. I think I'm fighting for the not only my life and the life of all the people I depend on, I think I'm fighting for a lot of other people because if they can chop my head off or if they can break me, which is their intention, if they can get me to cry my eyes out like Jordan Peterson, like a little bitch, if they can get me to say sorry, if they can get me to be a little, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said misogynistic things. That they want to break my spirit and break all the masculine spirit along with it, all the people who believe in me along with it. Yeah. That's why they're attacking me and they're trying to break me. And I'm preoccupied. I have a war. In fact, I have a few. And I don't have much interest in anything else. And I think that Anyone at home who doesn't understand that we are currently in a culture war needs to wake up because we are. That's golden. You fight it for your life. They're fighting for fun. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, last one here says Preston McHugh says, Stinko has really been picking up the fighting space. What are your guys' thoughts on his progress and persistence? Well, I, have a, I, I saw him sparring Sean. I saw that clip. But uh, I think every man should go train. And if he's training, that's good for him. I don't think there's any reason why a man shouldn't train. I think you should train and, and be as capable as you can. And physical combat is something that is innate to masculinity and something you should be good at. Sure. Yeah. All right. That's Nico for not falling. Yeah, he did, he did well. Good job on that. Hey. Good job. Um, so, Andrew. So, guys, we're going to cut it here. This is first part. This is the first part, guys. Uh, we're going to do the second part, but not today. I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, we have other reaction to do. Uh, we have other he did uh, more two more interview I don't know if they are new or no he did one with the Romanian in the Romanian television the other one he did it I just saw it uh, on YouTube I don't know if it's a new or it's old so I don't know I'm gonna react to them because I didn't see them before that's the only thing I'm gonna react to them because I didn't see them before that's one gonna be first part and then we drop second part and then we do Tristan in fresh and fit we draw we split it like uh, i know it's two hours we do it one hour first part one hour second part yeah so this is how it goes so thank you guys for sticking us with us and i hope you enjoy the reaction i hope you take some good points here because i will uh he didn't say much news i already hear everything here he said the in in this one hour nothing new about it because i already hear these kind of things i already hear them before so nothing new in this one he's just saying the same thing and the same message so guys make sure to check uh, the store i'm going to make a publicity for my store make sure to check it i'm going to post it in the video to show you what i have as a design and you can go to the link in the description click on the store and go purchase something as a support for us so if you want to support us for doing more and try to reach what I'm trying to reach. And they said, guys, this is a store. Make sure to check it. I have cool new, cool design. And I'm dropping every day new design. As you see, the Meowgistic is my. It's not my favorite, but I like it. It's a hippie cat. My favorite is the the wolf, the hunter fearless. Yeah, and you can see it. 
from back from front and this one I put it only in the back in the in the front as you can see it's a poet I wrote it's uh, for the woman studying there is a reflection for it as you can see I'm dropping everyday uh, design you may find something you really like freedom yeah like this one I lost my boo see this one is also I, I like it but my favorite one is also this one the dream catcher the fox between the four, the wolf and the fox, uh, I uh, pretty enjoy them both. Uh, this is my favorite design so far, the fox and this one. Yeah, and I have we have cool design also, so you can check Dark Dark Vador. Yeah, the cats. Yeah, you can check. Be simple, be creative, seek. So yeah, make sure to check and uh, to purchase something from here, guys, as a support for us. I really appreciate it, guys. And if you want to see me doing more reaction, make sure to purchase something from here, guys. See ya. Thank you. In the same way, in the same, in the same time, you're gonna have a nice T-shirt on you guys. So make sure to check the store, guys, and make sure to subscribe and give me suggestion. See you for second part. Peace.